So those are the updates on what we've been what mother Hey everyone, another month, another video. And we're gonna kick off this month's video by jumping right into some exciting movie progress updates, updates, updates. Last month I'd mentioned that we'd hired a few 3D artists and I'm pleased to report that we now have full 3D models for all four of the main characters. But before the modelers could get started, I first had to provide them with character model sheets to demonstrate what each of the guys should look like from different angles. These were basically cleaned up versions of the model sheets we used on the original series. However, to allow for costume changes that have to happen throughout the movie, the characters first had to be modeled without any clothes on. Which meant that I also had to create turnaround designs of each character naked. Yeah. It was a dirty job, but somebody had to do it. And now, without further ado, here's the click in 3D. First up is Nitz, modeled by David Reddick. And here's Gimpy, modeled by Ronald Cam. And Cal, modeled by Nikki Maxwell. And finally, Rocco, modeled by Masood Sarahi. I can't tell you how pleased I am with this amazing group of artists who graced our little movie with their immense talent. Definitely check out their portfolio links in the description notes below. They are all awesome human beings. A couple of them even agreed to chat with me on camera about their process of translating these 2D characters into 3D. So look out for that more in-depth behind-the-scenes video in the next week or two. Now that we have these character models, the next step is to rig each one of them with a joint system and controllers, which will allow us to puppet the characters, animate them, and also plug in motion capture performances. If you think of the model as the skin, the rig is the bones. But the most complicated challenge we now face is figuring out how to render these 3D models to have the same 2D hand-drawn look and feel from the original series. I have some ideas on how this can be theoretically achieved, and now that we have these 3D models to work with, I can finally start putting those theoretical ideas to the test and see if they're actually gonna work. And man, oh man, I really hope they work because if they do, it's gonna make producing all of the animation for this movie a whole lot more doable. Are these lights like a hundred times brighter than normal? Because I feel like I'm not even opening my eyes right now. You want sunglasses? <laughs> yes. So those are the updates on what we've been up to. And now to your questions from last month's video. Just a side note, as there are fewer and fewer questions each month, moving forward, I'll try to start answering your questions right in the comments section so I can keep these monthly videos more focused on movie progress updates. But for now, a few of you asked where you can watch the original Undergrad series. Uh, if you can find an old DVD on eBay and you have a DVD player from the 1900s, that's one way. Uh, but also, an anonymous hero remastered the episodes and put a playlist on YouTube. Here's a link. And thanks for your suggestions on other YouTubers that I could potentially collab with to promote the Undergrad's movie and this channel. Uh, I'll definitely look into those, and if any of you want to put a bug into the ear of those YouTubers you mentioned, I wouldn't stop you. A few folks have asked when the Undergrad's movie takes place. While I obviously don't want to give too much of the story away, I can tell you that the movie takes place in 2002. We're hoping to continue with the early 2000s vibes and music, and to capitalize on the nostalgia for that time period. We of course also want it to feel as much like the original series as possible, and that's also when the last episode of the series left off, so 2002 it is. Uh, again, without giving too much away, the movie will kick off at the end of summer break as the guys are about to head into their sophomore year of college. And then things ensue. And that's as specific as I'll get. Someone asked about language versioning. Uh, that process happens in post-production after the movie is done. And I do hope we can find the budget for it. Basically, the script is translated into French or Spanish or what have you. And then we cast and record actors to overdub the dialogue. Speaking of dialogue recording... It's a segue, guy! That was me looking at Cal. You got it. Who did I voice in the original series? Uh, in Canada, I was Nitz, Gimpy, Cal, and one or two incidental characters, like this guy. Um, and in the US, I voiced all of those same characters, plus Rocco. Wieners, 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 put them in your mouth. Wieners, 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 get it? It's like my Johnson Alpha. I see there are lots of voice actors in the house wanting to audition for roles, which is great. Uh, though I'm pretty sure there are rules about using union and non-union actors. I'm not 100% certain, but I think a production has to be either one 
or the other. So as with most things, it all depends on what we can afford. Obviously, I'd love to bring back as much of the original cast as possible, and I know most, if not all of them, are union actors, but we're still a ways away from tackling that one. Right now, my main focus is on building out the production pipeline that will allow us to get champagne animation on a Coors Light budget. Anyway, thanks again for all the supportive comments you left on the February update video. They honestly keep me going, and I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Look out for the video of my interviews with the 3D modelers in the next week or two. And be sure to tune in next month for the April movie update. Biddy, biddy, biddy. That's all, guys. Thanks, gal.